So let's start today. First time. Well, welcome, Wendy. Wendy, nice to meet you. And welcome to this lovely community. <clears throat> it is really lovely here. Let's start by breathing and just really arriving in this space today. Nice to be here. Wendy is fine. Okay. Thanks, Wendy. We often, you know, fly into and out of moments in our day. And, you know, we come flying in our hairs, flying or, you know, there's dust coming behind us because we've come in so quickly. And then we do that, you know, where you're on the cartoons, you scramble and the legs are going, 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 going before they can even get going. And it's like, sometimes that's how we move about in our day. And we're not aware of it because we're so used to doing it. It's just how it happens. So let's just let the dust settle. And I've not used this analogy before, but even the thoughts in our mind are like dust. Let them settle. Bring your attention to one thing, which is only and ever what you can ever do. You can only think about one thing at a time. One moment. And we'll be exploring that more. So bring your attention to your breath. That which happens even when you're not aware of it. And in this moment of awareness, just watch it going in and out. Pick a point. If you're breathing through your nose, maybe it's, it, it's as you're, it's passing up in through your nostrils. If you're breathing through your mouth, notice as it passes your lips. Just allow your breath to kind of move your body how it wants to. With a fuller breath, allow it to expand. I took a really big breath and then all of a sudden I could see I wanted to stretch about. Follow that. Follow what is going on in your body. Allow it to lead you. In this moment, with your breath. Allow the breath to lead. And just notice the space. And I know, you know, we'll often talk about the space at the top of the breath or at the end of the breath or it could be the beginning of the breath. And let's allow our awareness to come to all of the breath. Track it going through past your nostrils or the lips. Track it going down into the lower lobes of your lungs. What's happening in the moment before it ex? There's an exhale. Do you see and hear the quiet? Even if it's a noisy breath. <sighs> There's an underlying quiet.
It's rhythmic. Can be soothing. And if your eyes are closed, you can flutter your eyelids back open. And let's bring this quiet to this topic today. Messages from pain's whispers. We'll look at, you know, what I would really love to spark in you. Because, and why spark in you? Because you have all of your own answers. And just like me, just like every other human, sometimes they we just can't seem to access them or hear them or see them or receive them because we have a lot of we have a lot going on in our mind about many different things one after the other after the other so if I could spark some of this in you today, this would be cool. A sense of empowerment. Not that you're maybe going to feel fully, fully empowered, fully got it all. But even just a sense of agency. when it comes to you and your momentary or day-to-day -day pain, disease, discomfort. I would love to spark a, a light, a curiosity to look beyond the pain. Look beyond the experience. And see more. Because when we're experiencing the surface of something, We're in kind of the, um, the by, not the byproduct, that's not a good word that I'm looking for. It's like we're in the symptoms, like waves being on a lake and being in these big waves. And it's like, whoa, how, you know, how did us all happen if we understand the wind? and maybe undercurrents, looking beyond what it is that is kind of right in your face. Look before that. Because what we're seeing with our eyes, <clears throat> it's not the truth. It's not the foundation from which it's coming from. I would love to spark in you to see that your experience every moment of every day is happening from you by you. You're experiencing it from the inside out. And I hope that you will see that having a sense of taking personal responsibility for that 
is not a weight. It's not, oh, I'm creating this. I know. It's like, no, I'm creating this. Oh my gosh. That means that if I can create this, I can create something different. I can create something that's even a half a percent better than this. There is freedom. There is freedom in understanding how our experiences are created by us. That, if, if this is new to you today, I totally understand how you might want to slip to the side of, oh my God, you know, and feel overwhelmed by what I created this, I made this happen and that, oh my gosh, I, I get that. And I'm going to invite you to take our hands, take our hand, all of us here together, take our virtual hands and let's not go there because there is no help there. We are, hi Marika, wow that resonates with you, hey, yeah. let's take our hands gently, invitingly, not gripped. Just let's invite each other to be in this journey and to see and to not slip there. To actually, it's like, oh my gosh, what is possible for me instead? What would be more delightful? What would have me just feeling like I can get out of bed? Moment by moment, that's how life happens. You can call it moment and in that moment there can only be one step or one thought that will either keep you stuck or have you in motion. And there's the law of motion, of inertia, I think it's called. Where something in motion, that's where momentum builds. Yeah. I would love for you to, to see how whether you're, you know, experiencing um, whatever your current circumstances are in relation to pain, whether it's mental pain, mental anguish, or physical pain, that whatever's happening in this moment, that we see that what we experience what we can't, what's available to us to experience is one of two things. We experience it fresh in the moment, or we experience it from the past. We take what's happening and we muck it about in what we have, what we know, and all that we know from this personal mind is is past. So we put this current moment and we dip it into the the muck and mire and then we bring that forward and say, yep, that's what I got. That's my life. That's how it goes. This is how it always is. It's never different. And I would like you to challenge. 
I'd like you to challenge that because I am in this moment, I'm 100% sure because I've never come across any human being who has experienced one thing in every moment. It's impossible so far as I can see because we're always experiencing the thought in the moment. So if we even, if we think that I'm in cons. I mean, if you have chronic physical pain or chronic mental pain, excuse me, and it may seem that it's always there. And I invite, and I will, I, I do want, I want to challenge you, especially if you're resistant, if you're thinking, no, Makaila, I have this pain all the time, 24-7. I challenge that. I'd like you to challenge it for yourself. To see how there are moments where you forget. You're not aware. You're not even aware of the pain. But then it's like, oh, and then you remember. It's like you look for it. I've used this before about, you know, if you kind of twist an ankle and when you think about it, you're limping and limping. And then later in the day, someone says, oh, your ankle's better. It's like, oh, no, no, actually it does still. And you start limping again because they saw that you weren't limping. It happens. It happens to us all the time. All the time. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm Makayla. I'm from Alberta, Canada. I have a, um, I'm a transformative coach, meaning that I work with the foundation of how the mind works, how life works. So we can make think this better and that better, you know, in your day-to-day -day life. But if you're not understanding how the system works, how we got to that place in the first in the first place, it'll happen again. It'll happen again. So it's really about understanding that you are wisdom driven from inside. You have your own wise inner GPS that's guiding you. A hundred percent of the time. And sometimes you're aware of it, you hear it, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're here hearing it, you're going along, life is going along tickety boo, and you know that you're in flow with your inner GPS. You're not getting a nudge to, hey, make a U turn, hey, turn around. We'll talk about that, those messages that we do get that say, hello, what are you doing here? Here, let me give you some more pain to let you know what you're focusing on and that you're going down a path that is, you know, where there's construction, where there's congestion. And I do energy work as well. So, and it was so interesting um, because whenever a subject comes up, it's like, I want to know more. Like, what else is there to know? No. So I do take things in and it's just like, what is it sparking in me, the understanding? And how will this be helpful and how could I speak about it? Hi, hi, Charlie. Welcome. This is so informative for me, taking lots of notes. It's currently studying the mind-body pain connection with nervous illness. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome, Charlie. I'll share a couple of people who 
um, or one anyways that offhand I would invite you to listen to to check out if it resonates if it resonates anything that I take in you know how you can read a book you know like a you know let's say it is a self develop or hear someone talk and then you know and then you listen back and it's just like you hear a bunch of new things yeah so and that's like the wisdom is saying yes take this in yep got that you connect you're connecting with things and it opens up it up, ups your um your co consciousness your awareness and then you can see more in the one of the foundations um, of my teachings, learnings, my, what I've been learning was three years ago, I came across something called the three principles. And it's a simple spiritual and psychological understanding of how the mind and life works, that we actually experience our own thinking. Nothing out there, no one no circumstance of our life has us feeling anything. If you say, uh, you make me so mad. No. No, it doesn't work like that. Someone might have done something and you had a thought of, it's not okay, it's wrong, I disagree, I don't want you to do that. And that is causing you to feel the mad not them it's an inside out life experience it is not outside in so when i got this understand and that you know we are basically the energy of god universal intelligence infinite energy and possibility i want to come in other words, because sometimes you can say the same words over and over and they almost become a little meaningless because they're just, it's like you're not even connecting. It's just like, you are God. And now if you were raised in a way of that God is on a pedestal or, you know, I was raised... Um, you know, in a religion that I don't, I'm actually learning more about it now because I have a family member who is like interpreting it all to me in like day It's like, why didn't they say that? Why didn't they say that? Why did they have to scare us and tell all these awful stories without giving any context? <laughs> it's like, I just didn't get it. I just didn't get it. And I'm getting it. Oh, interesting. So it's not... I see God as something to be revered and we are it. You are to be revered. I hope that's the right word. It sounds like a word that means like honored. I mean honored and respected and listened to. Ah wise one that's you that's you so anything I say here I want you to take it take it and what Charlie said about yeah all right the, or, or no who Marika said like this resonates and that's how you live what resonates what clicks and there might be something it's like mm. There's something there. There's something that's tickling. I don't quite know what it is, but I know that I need to hear more. So anyway, getting back to, so uh, in my introduction into the energy world was Reiki, reflexology, body talk, Acunect. And I remember the first teachings in Reiki and this I was reminded of this in the last couple of days because I was like listening to some different things and it's like yeah okay yeah I get that I get all that 
And I was reminded about when we would describe the benefit of Reiki or, you know, those kinds of, and I don't really do those modalities anymore. I just let it come through. So things happen without going through specific protocols. Although, so it's like, I'm just letting the wisdom come through and know like what's needed here. Stress was one of the things that we talked about a lot because what it does in the physical body, not just in the physical body, in our mind. What is stress, first of all? Stress is thought, creative, created experience of tension and congestion and tightness in the body. That's my own description of it, how I see it. So in working in reflexology, the meridians and all of that, it's all about opening things up because the physical body has the natural ability to heal itself. We see it all the time. I don't need to talk about it, really. It can heal. It's made to heal. What's healing it? It's not us. Even doctors and, you know, they might go in and, and, and you know, do surgeries and things that, um, you know, and take things that, you know, and fix and sew them back up and all that kind of stuff. But then they just kind of keep things clean, maybe with antibiotics, maybe with an ointment or something, just like we would do with our, our child who's got a big scrape and it's all oozy and woozy. And we'll clean it up, clean all the dirt. And maybe we'll put ointment on, or maybe we'll just let it go. Maybe we'll put a Band-Aid on it to protect it for a couple of days. And then we want the Band-Aid off so we can like breathe. And that's how I think about it anyway. Breathing. And then we don't do in it. We're not healing. We're not getting in there and healing it. That's happening from within, within the system. So Dr. Bill Pettit, this is a, I recommend Dr. Bill Pettit. Oh, I'm going to do this because I know I can now. I learned this a couple of calls ago. Dr. Bill P. E T T I T. You can find him anywhere on YouTube. There's lots of people that interview him. He is in the same understanding. Just a bit about this, the three principles um, it, of divine mind, consciousness, and thought. So mind, that's the wisdom, the infinite intelligence that lives us, the universal mind versus the personal mind. It's infinite. Divine consciousness. And that's our ability to be aware, our ability to see more, to become more and more and more aware, or not. And the power of thought, that we think. We are thinking beings. We have thoughts crossing our mind 24-7. Sometimes it's quiet. Sometimes it's very noisy. They're going fast and furious. This is where anxiety can come in and over, overwhelm anxiety. Sometimes we are making meaning of the thoughts that are coming across our mind. We make them mean something, we grab onto them and, and we, have, we judge it. You know, it, it's, I'm, and then we'll, it'll, we'll have a response, a physical response in the body, what we call emotions or feelings. The thoughts and feelings rise up together. Now, there might be thoughts that actually you don't really have much meaning to make of it. And then we have a calmer mind. When I, when we were breathing in the beginning, if we have, if our, our breathing is clean and clear and we're just following, 
the breath, we will feel pretty kind of calm. If you have a cold and you're all stuffed up and every time, you know, you can't breathe through your nose because it's plugged. And when you breathe through your mouth, it tickles something and you cough. You might have some thinking in that exercise. But even in that, so you might think, oh, this cold or, and then you'll start tension builds, stress builds. Even in a moment of that, you can like, you can just bring it to, ah, notice how far my breath can go before it's blocked. It actually goes up into my nostrils and then it gets caught there. Ah, interesting. Or when it's like, how far? And it's just like, what if I breathe in slowly? Oh, then I don't cough. When we put our attention on something that and we're um, like in more a state of like curiosity or wonder or just following and there's no feeling then of, oh, I can't. Oh my God, what am I going to, I got to take something. So even in the, in a moment, so there could be two people with the same symptoms having a completely different experience. One could be all caught up in their head, this dang cold. And, you know, I got it from so-and-so those, you know, they never wash their, you know, who knows what, whatever might be churned up in your mind. And the person next will be like, whoa, I can't breathe, but oh, no, I can see, I can take it that far. So it's like, oh, you can almost see the blockage happening in behind the scenes. What's it like? Two people, same symptoms, different experience. Someone with, uh, chronic pain. This is from Dr. Bill Pettit too. Two people, the same pain, you know, levels of pain, let's say. And one, or, or no, not the levels, because how like a pain stimulus, let's say. Same. Yet one is experiencing so much more pain and angst because they're stressed, they're focused on it, and they're building up this tension, which contributes to the pain and also stunts the natural ability for the body to heal. And that's why in reflexology and Reiki, we're always looking to clear the blockages. Relax, let it, let it fall open. Let's open up those meridians. There, it cause and release the tension in them so the body can come in the flow of energy and and body fluids you know blood and uh, uh, the cleaning liquid uh, the lymph fluid so it can all come in and do its job it's the same thing you're you're what you are thinking, what's going on in your mind has a direct effect on the health of your body. Physically, it'll affect that. And just know that underneath it all, you are well. You are well. Even if there's something like if there's, if you were born with something that has afflicted you in a different way and it, it limits something and maybe there is discomfort or something that comes kind of with it to the, ex the extent that you think and make meaning of it, if you're resisting it, you know, we've all heard that if you resist it, it persists. Well, what does that really mean? When we resist something, we're putting our full attention on it. How can we resist something that we're like sticking in our, and we're growing it and we're making it bigger. We're blowing it up with our own minds. And we're like, whoa, 
right? When we resist something, it persists. It, that's why. That's how that works. Because we're sticking it in front of us and we're holding it there. Instead of getting on with life. Okay, I got this going on. Okay, I broke my finger. I'm talking about little things. Or I have some kind of a, you know, a, 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 a oh, this is a good time to say this. This is from Dr. Bill Pettit. Diagnostic labels are a description of where you are, not who you are. I'm going to repeat that. Diagnostic labels are a description of where you are, not who you are. Dr. Bill Pettit is, he's like 81 or 80, I think he's 80 something. Now. I'm not actually sure. Dr. Mavis Karn, she's another psychiatrist. She's 81. And I think I didn't finish my story about where I've met these people. And that was Doc, or, um, not Dr. Sydney Banks, who was a Scottish welder living in Salt Spring Islands, BC, Canada. He had an enlightenment experience and basically everything parted and he was able to see that, oh my gosh, we're making it all up. Our, it, we're just thinking. If we know that we're scaring ourselves and we're making ourselves sick with our own thoughts, everything will change in this world. And he, um, Marika, says, I love it. Um, he said, turn to his wife. There was actually a series of, there's a, there's a YouTube channel, Sydney Banks, S-Y-D-N-E-Y, -E Banks. He said, we're going to change the face of psychology and psychiatry in the world. And he did. So Dr. Bill Pettit, uh, Mavis Karn, she's 81 as well. These are some of the original uh, psychiatrists and psychologists that work with him. Uh, Dr. George Pransky. Oh, there's more. Dr. Mark Howard. I'm just going to make a note that um, when I get some, uh, when I get my behind the scenes thing in my bio, I'll actually create something else that I can list some things and I'll list some of these people because I recommend that you just listen to them. They'll have different language too, but it's all, they're all pointing. So they are all students of the three principles as articulated by Sydney Banks, which is really, you know, Sydney Banks said, you know, there's not really three. There's only one. There's only one. And this is what all spiritual teachings that I follow and know anyway, they all point back to the one, one infinite wisdom and intelligence. We all come from the same energy. We are all equal. And we all have different levels of seeing things, seeing through things and not. There are things that will be not an issue for you in your life. And yet for me, I'm like, I get all twisted up about it. I have a lot of thinking about it. That is the only thing that gets you twisted up is your own thinking, your own meaning that you're putting on things. So, yeah, the cause of mental stress, of mental illness, mental pain and anguish, the cause of physical pain. Yes, we do have a physical body and you might stub your toe and it will hurt. And if you've had, if you're in a really low mood, meaning if you're having a lot of thinking that, you know, ugh, things don't work out and, and you, and you might not even be aware because you might've been in this mode of thinking for so many years that it's just normal. Like, oh yeah, they get to have their grand life, but here I am, I have. And it's like, you almost become like, that's my lot in life. This is just no challenge it 
It's not true. It's so not true. We cannot conceive of the infinite possibilities that are available because we're thinking so much with this mind that only knows the past. It's putting everything, putting the past filter, our current moment through this past filter. So we keep getting the same experience. You'll hear this if you do choose to listen to Dr. Bill Pettit. He has so many, I mean, he's been in this, in his profession for like 45 years or something. He has miraculous stories of, and he's a psychologist, psychiatrist. So it, a lot is around that. He did have a couple of years as a physical medical doctor as well. So the stories of how things that were deemed chronic and lifelong, and you'll have this the rest of your life, disappeared or reduced way back that a totally different experience of life was had when they saw through the illusion of what we're thinking being truth. Things like uh, a lot of skin disorders, stress. A lot of, and I'm talking about stress because when I say stress, I really mean thought. Thought causes tension. Well, depending, we can even, I mean, we can, we can feel, we can have thought about how wonderful it is to be walking wherever we're walking, even if it's just in our own house. Ah, oh, I feel so good when my house is clean. There's no tension there. Even if my toe is like all big and broken and right that's where I got there I'm so sorry you will get to know those new to me I do go off and tr trying to work on that to be more helpful and logical or step by step at least but if we're in a low mood having a lot of stinky thinking and we bang our toe it can be the worst thing ever and the pain will be excruciating and someone banging it in the exact same, maybe it's even you. It's happened to you. Look in your life where it's happened, where you've, you know, you've injured yourself and it's just like, oh, wow. Whew. And then you just carry on. You do what needs to be do or do what needs to be done. And you carry on. It's no big deal. And you forget about it very quickly. It's like, oh, yeah. And you remember it. It happens to all of us. We have our own examples of how this is already happening in our life, how it has been since we were born. Actually, when we're first born, we're very clear-minded. We don't have a lot of thinking about things. Uncomfortable, we make a noise, a louder noise, maybe, if it's not being you know it's very easy oh something's needed we can do that we can follow that <laughs> I got that connected our own thinking can cause stress responses that knocks out our immunity that re can reduce our ability to heal that tension the congestion yeah you can go to people to have them work on you. I'm going to someone next week who I'm a little afraid, just a little bit, because I know it's not going to be super comfortable. But I know that he's going to help me release so much discomfort 
in my body. And I only really am aware of it when I'm aware of it. <laughs> or I should say, I only really feel it when I'm aware of it. I have jaw issues and stuff. And I, anyways. So, yeah. If you have any questions or anything, please let me know. There's just a couple of, I think I've pointed out here that when you have a calmer mind, a quieter mind, everything sort of elongates and drops and opens, congestion releases. And the physical body can heal more easily. And the mental anguish or pain in a, mo in a moment, in a moment, as soon as you have, remember, you can only think one thought at a time. As soon as you are thinking that, thinking a thought that has you feeling just a tiny bit better, it's like it's gone. Sunita is a TMJ you have, as I have tried geminal neuralgia and TMJ. Oh, I don't know what that trigeminal neuralgia is, but yes, TMJ. Or they call it TMD. And I was doing NUCA and UCCA. It's a chiropractic care that only works with your upper three vertebrae, vertebrae, vertebras, whatever, the top three things that a regular chiropractor doesn't work on and it it's been since between Christmas and New Year's last year is when I first began it did make a tremendous difference and now it feels as he puts it it's like it takes a long time for the plane to reach elevation and before it levels off so I think I'm kind of leveled off so I'm going to see someone who kept being I've been taking my daughter to him and he's been like one session tremendous things have been released from her body and it was it was the it was very painful but he has a way which actually I'm going to speak to because I think this is important when this is um when you understand where pain is coming from and some pain has a purpose and some pain is purposeless. So a lot of the pain that's as a result of our own thinking, because we're making stuff up innocently, innocently, and we've been conditioned to innocently do this because we've been innocently taught by people who were doing it innocently too. It didn't know any better. But now we know different. Now we can know and we can test it out in our life. How am I experiencing my thinking? Right, so I can look at, okay, well, let me take this, let me take on this example of this. He's actually a chiropractor and he does active release therapy, which I've done all that. And like that doesn't, I just keep going back and back and back and back and there was no change. Yeah, this is not your typical, actually for my daughter, Elizabeth, he didn't even do chiropractor on her. Her legs have been going numb for years since she was like a kid, she's 17. And, you know, been to the doctor and she's been to other things and there's like, it was kind of dismissed. He understood. He took the time to explain, ah, this is how it works. This is how the body is. So I bet if you sit like this, then this happens. And if you sit like that, then this. And I bet if you put your leg, he gave her all these scenarios saying, I understand. And he let her know that this wasn't going to feel great. But he said, you can't hit the practitioner. <laughs> and he has a really lovely bedside manner. But he gave meaning to the pain that she was going to be experiencing in the releasing. So she never had this again. One treatment and it was gone. Like 15 years of this or maybe not quite that long. We weren't aware when she was that young, but as a young grade schooler. Marika, 
Uh, my mind tried to trick me just now, but I was aware of it happening. <laughs> LOL. <clears throat> I am in the process of healing from MS. Thank you for bringing more clarity in this process. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm getting more clarity too, right? It helps to talk about these things and explore it and listen to someone else. How does someone else talk about it? Because it'll spark something different. They'll use different languages or words. <clears throat> Dr. Bill Pettit has, he is a, an amazing storyteller and he loves to tell stories and he has so many of them. He has so many of them. So, yeah. Anyway, so through this process, yes, at appointment with her, she was gripping and holding her shirt and breathing. <clears throat> and then it was released. Yes, you recognize that. Yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. So when you understand, I had my babies, um, well, William, my first, he's 20, turned out to be a C-section. We were planning home births. Elizabeth was a home birth. And William, yeah, it didn't turn out like, like that. But the, tr the training, I'm going to say, that we got, it was a program called Birthing From Within. And what she did, what I recognized was, oh, she talked about it like pain with a purpose. She let us know. She let it, we used ice and different things to experience it, even for our partners who were going to be with us, to experience like freezing cold ice on you. So you got us, and it was very small sense of what it could be. The only time I felt pain, I'm going to talk about the home birth right now, was um, when, and we were, I was in a pool, was when we had a Malmute, an Alaskan Malmute, and they howl, right? Oh, you know, they and, and they moan and, you know, talk. Well, there was times where I was emitting sounds, but it was so interesting because that did not feel like pain. What felt like pain to me was when I heard, you know, I had, there was two midwives, my husband and my son, who was three, and my sister who was looking after my son and they started talking about um Casey the dog because she started moaning talking she started talking and then I tuned in to Casey and then I felt it and then I had a different I heard a different sound come out of me and it's like and and so immediately I closed my eyes and I went back in and it was it was fine but that was astounding to me I was astounding when you this whole thing about how your thought controls when I kind of went outside of me and was in it's like no this is an internal your pain is an internal experience experience the experience of it what I'm saying here I hope you're seeing this if you are someone who has chronic pain when you are connected when you are in allowing just staying present and I wasn't present to pain I was present to the experience of living in that moment my living was having a baby every moment of your day it your, it, your purpose will be something different It'll be making a meal or going for a walk or going to work or playing with your kids or your grandkids whatever you can be centered within aware that you're experiencing life from the inside out and as soon as you kind of forget and kind of get out there and think that all of this you'll you can get distracted hmm. i i haven't processed this enough um, because I just had a call shortly before this call this morning. I, um, it, 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 she's a new acquaintance of mine. Friend, we're in the same uh, group together for something else. And she is a Feldenkrais practitioner. 
and I went to one of her workshops on Sunday and it was about loving your hips or on Saturday it was. And it was fabulous. It was just so great. She's such a great teacher. And this morning she's creating something new and she asked if she could um, ask me some questions around just so she can figure out what's the best way and how to do this. So I did that for her and then I said, hey, I have a question. I'm going into this talk about, you know, the message of pain's whispers. And I said, from a, fe and Feldenkrais is all about the mechanics of the body and understanding how it works and what it needs when muscles are long or short or, you know, tight and just very simple and good information on understanding how the body works. And I said, from a Feldenkrais, you know, perspective, what is pain? And yeah, it's all about messaging what, and there's so much more that she said. So maybe I'll talk about that once I've had time to process it, but kind of in a nutshell, it's just telling you that your physical, how you're maneuvering your physical body is not how it's meant to be like things are off, right? It's a message. It's telling you something. It's bringing your attention or your awareness to something. And of course, as she's talking, it's like, I don't speak another language yet, um, but I imagine it's someone who knows two languages. And when you hear your the second language, maybe you convert it. I've heard someone say that before, that they kind of convert it into their native language. And it was like, as she was talking, I had this conversion going into the spiritual, my spiritual language and how I could see how thoughts and how, like what the tendons and the ligaments, which are the things that are holding everything together kind of thing, it's the structure, it's the foundation. It's like, oh, that's like infinite wisdom. That's your foundation that, and it's, it's kind of there. It's anyway, it was just kind of interesting, but it's always in, in the spiritual way. It's like, I see that before anything ever happens in the physical body, it's experienced in the mind. It's the only way. It's the only way it can be a nurse who is also in this understanding of the principles of how life works and how we experience our thought said, even with pain, I shared this if you were at, I did do another talk on around pain before or how it came up, but it's like, if you put your, you know, if you, if you, you touch a hot stove, you don't experience pain first, you experience shock. And then you have a thought, ah, I burnt myself. And then you feel the pain. Test it. I mean, no, please don't go burn yourself. When you, you know, next, at some point in your life over the next month or so, you might, something might happen that you might feel a little, you know, I jammed my elbow on the thing before and I had a little, well, my first experience wasn't the discomfort. It was like, it was like a shock. Interesting. Interesting. So what to do? Like, what do you do then? And it's really about, it's about getting to know yourself. It's about being aware. It's about slowing down and seeing wh how, where this is true rather than going to the next call or the next thing or the whatever it's like just take some time and just experience ex experiment with yourself I, I don't know about you but there are some things that I'm running from I might run from and I'll go to one and someone will teach me something. They'll, I'll hear something and it's like, okay, that makes sense. And then, and then I don't go and put it into practice. I find someone else who has a different way of saying it. And then I'll, I'll, I'll like, okay, 
Yeah, I'm like, and then they, t and it's like, oh, it kind of points back. They might have used different words, but it's pointing back to the same thing. Okay, well, what about, what about them? What about them? And it's like, I'm looking for the easy button. I don't want to do the work. I don't want to look. And then I do. Lori, I have lymphedema. Effects of it can, effects of it take up a lot of headspace, chronic conditions, so no cure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry that you have that. That you have that, Lori. And also, there's an opportunity here for you, if you care, to explore it. And I'm just going to repeat what Dr. Bill Pettit said, that diagnostic labels are a description of where you are, not who you are. And when when we like test out okay so here i'm going to think this out oh i'm i'm going to what i mean is i'm going to say out loud a thought process that might come up that we might play with out of the call you know it's like okay if i'm the image of God, if I'm a creator, if I'm run an inner guided, like a GPS system 24 seven, guiding me to the path of least, the path of better feeling to, because creation, the wisdom that we are, that creative essence of who we are, we're looking to feel good all the time, better and better and better. We're never looking to, yeah, I want to feel worse today. We're never looking for that, right? But we tip over into that innocently. It's like we slip into a ditch. So let's, like, if I am this, if there, if all that I can think of in my head is past, it's old stuff, it's gone, and every moment is fresh and new. Every moment, there's only one moment. And if I'm infinite wisdom, infinite intelligence with infinite possibilities, like how am I going to find out what those are? How am I going to get those? How do I know? Where do I find them? Listen, you listen to the feeling. You listen to the feeling of, where am I going to go today? What am I going to do in this moment? What's when we hang up from this call, you can sit there and you can ask yourself what, what now? And you might get just hang out here. Just nothing. You might get nothing. And maybe you might just want to stay where you're seated, seated or standing or walking or whatever and, and just hang out there. And when you're kind of in that place of awareness, because you're not looking out there, oh, I got to do that and I got to do this and I got to do not that, like where? And then your attention will be drawn. You know, those times where you get a nudge to call someone from out of the blue or you're thinking about them, they came to mind and then all of a sudden you run into them. That's wisdom. That's infinite intelligence. There are no coincidences. This is all orchestrated by something greater than us. What would feel better? Lori, this might be a question. What would feel better in this moment? What, this might, this is a coaching question. What has worked for you before? What has had you feeling better? Mavis Karn, who is an 81 year old, it's like, you know, she still counsels people uh, in the understanding. She's <clears throat> been in this understanding for 40 some years too. 
will say, when is the last time, no, ugh. when is the last time that you felt how you want to feel all the time or more of the time? We can look, if there's any decent use of the past, it's what worked. What felt good? Oh, let me, let me borrow some of that. Let, let me do that. I enjoy that. I'm going to go make myself a cup of tea. I'm going to go sit outside. I'm going to go clean the bathroom, whatever. You don't even know what it's going, what's going to come out. You can't know because you're being lived by infinite intelligence, which is taking from this pool of delightful opportunities, op options, and bringing them through you. Here, let's send that one up through her. And then you get to experience it. I'm going to read this. I wrote this down. This is from Bill Pettit, Dr. Bill Pettit. And he said, the body, oh, well, actually this was another thing. That's not what I wanted to share, but I'll say it, that the body is, is um, you know, it's the same energy, but just in a different disguise. That was kind of, that was an aside. Sidebar, this is how I kind of wanted to end this because I thought this was really cool. There's a book that Sidney Banks wrote. He wrote a few books in story form. It's cool. And, and so this is from The Enlightened Gardener. Mental stress and distress is to mental illness as damp and dark is to fungus. It makes it grow. I'm going to repeat that. Mental stress and distress is to mental illness as damp and dark is to fungus. It makes it grow. Also, for physical illness or physical pain, love and lightheartedness is to mental illness and physical illness as sunlight and dry is to fungus. It eradicates it. I'll repeat it. Love and lightheartedness is to mental illness and physical pain as sunlight and dry is to fungus. It eradicates it. One sure way to gain lightheartedness, more lightheartedness, is to um, have an appreciation note taker. Great comparison. Hi, Maya. Have an appreciation note taker, whether it's a journal or it's like on your phone. Uh, maybe I'll talk sometime about how I see gratefulness and appreciation. I see them as different. I find that appreciation. I have a little journal, which I don't usually have it with me. So I also have a little notes app. Evernote is one. There's Every phone has a notes app. And when something happens in your day, like maybe there's something on this call that you could put in there, something that connected, you know, oh, I heard, you know, it's on this call, I heard this, like just one, just keep it, it's not a big long journal-y thing, just a little note of something that you appreciated. I don't know if you can hear my cat 
<laughs> PJ is meowing out there. I can appreciate that she is looking for attention and maybe she has a toy because she's getting that where she's getting the noisier meow. I can appreciate that. As soon as you have an appreciation for anything, your mood is lifted. Stress is re tension is re relaxed. And there's a release. There's a chemical reaction that happens in the body, hormonal. Remember, you're thinking, you're feeling. You think, you feel, chemical reaction happens in the body and an emotion is felt. That's what you're feeling. When you appreciate things throughout your day, if you're willing, I please try it out. You don't have to go get a You could just have a scrap of paper. Keep one in every room of the house and something, and with a pen. <gasps> I appreciate that. Ah, oh, I appreciate how the light is shining through the window. Ah, oh, I appreciate the shadow that that has made on the floor. Maya, your day ends up going better. Absolutely. And this is where momentum builds. This is where momentum builds. Remember, we're all energy. We are vibration. When I first learned about the principles, it popped open an understanding of many other teachings that I had followed, like law of attraction. It's like, oh, when you understand how it works, it's way simpler than how we were kind of maybe taught. An appreciation journal real time if you can make it convenient and simple and just notice how all of a sudden you're seeing things to appreciate everywhere why because you're looking for them how does that work because it's vibration we're vibration we attract to us are we yeah because we're looking for it you get what you're looking for so if you resist, you're looking at what you don't want. If you're appreciating, you're going to start getting more and more and more of what you want. Pain will fade into the background. I'm not saying that it's going to 100% disappear. But I know that there is a better experience of life available to you. And I really wish that for you. I do. I hope this did some of what I had was wanting it to do, inspiring, sparking you from inside, sparking your own inner wisdom. Hmm. Thank you for the hearts, the love. Appreciate that. If there's anything you would, um, I'm going to close off for today, but if there's anything that you would like maybe addressed, spoken about in a different way or more specifically, then like, let me know, jot it in the trap, error, in the trap, in the chat, in the chat. And yeah, Maya, your day does end up going better. Absolutely. Absolutely it does. Momentum comes from that. Momentum comes from that. So, and if you don't have time or you don't want to bring, I'm happy to receive messages too. If there's something that you want, you know, a question that you want to ask or a message that you want, you know, to, hey, can you talk about this or whatever more specifically or what did you mean by that? Or I'll answer it. I don't have any calls booked. I will <laughs> like any more live events booked yet. I'll do that today. Um, uh, so I will schedule at least one, likely two for each uh, for next week. I kind of would like to do like two a week and then have one week where I'm just, um, I don't even know. I don't know. It's just something that was sort of feeling good. It's like, oh, what would I do with that time if I didn't? 
I don't know. Anyway, we'll see. Maybe create some other things because I'm not, I'm not very good about creating tracks to put up and I haven't done a course yet. So Maya, you love, I love your talks relating to mental health. Okay. And that's where it's all, that's what it's all about. You know, like really everything that I do points to that. It really does. Because our mental health and we are mentally well, like the core who we really are, we are already mentally well. The only thing that has us doubting that or seeing something different or experiencing something different is our own thinking. Like it's so crazy that it's so simple. And because it's so simple, it's so easy for it to be overlooked and missed unless we slow down and it's like, what? Really? Okay. Let me test this out. Even in one little area, let me take five minutes today to see how it's true. If I look at my dog and think, Sergio, why did you go downstairs and eat those bones in my son's bedroom last night? And then I was up calling the vet to see, do I have to cut? Like, what, what do I need to do here? Or I look at him and, ah, oh, Sergio, there's a difference. Ah, oh, Sergio, you're so sweet. Look at your white little eyebrows. Look at your little gray chin. It's different. You can test it out right after we get off from the call in anything that's just sitting around you. You could look at something and be just like, oh, why does that light always fall down? Or it's just like, oh, I like that light. I, I, and it has different colors. I should play with that. Marika, love and light for all of you. Thank you, Makala. And you're welcome, Marika. The same to you. If you don't already follow me and this resonated, then please do follow me. And then you will get a little notification when I do get um, my next couple talks up. And it, I really appreciate you and your presence and being here together. So do, um, do have a marvelous rest of your week and even one smidgen better than this and then keep going in that momentum see what you can appreciate in your day all right ciao for now <laughs>